Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Allnock, and I'm gonna show you how to make your own bird feeder. There's so many bird stamps, you're gonna to wanna to learn how to do this one. This is a new release stamp set from Ellen Hudson, and it's got some really great birds in it. They're really simple to color, which some of you might really love because I know lots of people love to color super simple types of stamps. These have nice big heavy lines, especially when you stamp in VersaFine, <clears throat> which is what I'm using on some letterpress paper because I'm gonna use my Zig markers with it. And VersaFine for me just stamps much darker, like thicker lines. So you can also stamp these with thinner lines with an ink that you can use for your Copics. But I'm going to show you how to make a bird feeder of your very own. This is a die from just some random nested rectangle die set, but you can also just cut a piece of paper that's going to be the size you want, a piece of cardstock to trace around it, get it placed where you want it, and put a rectangle at the top, a rectangle at the bottom, and then give it a lid of some kind. You can do a round lid, you can do something that looks more like a roof, whatever you want. And then cut out the glass portion of it. And so when you cut out the glass portion, it's going to make it able to be the shaker that I'm going to create in my card. I'm using a fingertip knife. I find that I get really good control with that because I can stick my finger into the little handle and it feels more comfortable than trying to hold a big X-Acto knife of some kind. And then I'm going to trim around the bird heads. And the reason I did the bird heads in front of this rather than just making it kind of a standalone rectangle shape, which would have been easier to cut, is so that it looks like the birds are interacting with it. So the little chickadee at the bottom is standing on the footer and the other one is flying in front of it. If you wanted, you could make your birds outside of that area and make just a rectangle cut, or you can use the dies to cut the birds out, that sort of thing. To finish it off, just take a pen that is compatible with it, whatever medium you're gonna color with. So I'm using a water-based or waterproof pen since I'm using water-based markers, my zigs, for this and draw around the edges of the pencil lines that you drew and bada boom bada bing it's ready to go and it looks like I had a bird feeder stamp in my stamp set but I don't I made my own so these are the zig colors that I'm going to use and that picture is going to be on the blog if you forget what those colors were and you want to use them but for the most part just use whatever colors you want. I recently did a post and there was no video for it, but if you're interested in customizing your birds, see how I did it with a different stamp set. If you look on my blog under customizing bird stamps, and if I remember, I will add that link to the blog post so you can see more of that because I did a whole bunch of different bird breeds so that I could use my same stamp in different ways and use different tree branches for each one, etc., to make them all feel like they were very different. But for this one, I'm just gonna keep it nice and simple using my Zig markers. They work really well on letterpress paper or a bunch of different kinds of paper, but I like letterpress. Letterpress is also a little heavier. So when I did that detailed cutting on the little bird's beaks around the, the bird feeder, I had a little more stability there because it was a thicker paper. It's a 110 pound water, uh, uh, water based, uh, letterpress. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Boy, my mouth is not working as fast as my brain today. So the chickadee has just a little bit of gray and a little brown in him. And then the hummingbird can be all different kinds of colors. You can Google hummingbirds. And I wanna do some other stuff with this hummingbird sometime and make a whole bunch of hummingbirds on a card. I think that'd be really fun to figure out how to do that. And they're all different colors. So I made mine kind of rainbow-ish with yellow, red, and green, and then blended the colors using yellow in between all of them to make him look like he's a shimmery little, little birdie. The coloring in general, I, I keep really simple when I'm doing my Zig clean color markers, and that's one reason why I don't use them very often, because I love to do scenes and fancy things, and the Zigs don't lend themselves to that really well for the kinds of things that I do. I know some people like to uh, use them a lot and I am not as big a fan as I was when they first came out because I've gotten so much into scenes that's kind of become my gig and that's what I do on 
my my teaching site a lot is I teach you how to make backgrounds for things. And there's a recent class that was just launched in uh, in three different mediums over on the Art Dash Classes site, if you hadn't heard about it yet, about how to color rain in Copic markers, watercolor, and colored pencils. So that might be something of interest to you if you like to color. But those are, of course, a lot more complex because you have to have color all over the page when you make a scene. And these zigs, they, they just don't lend themselves to that as easily. If I'm gonna do a whole scene background thing, I would use a brush and water. And if I'm gonna do that, I might as well use watercolors. Because I have more color available to me when I mix colors than I do in my zig markers. So I have a little more avail av availability as well as control. So now I'm gonna make my shaker part. It's a really basic shaker, nothing exciting about this one other than how I made it to go around the birds there. So I just took a little scrap of packaging from something and cut a rectangle that's gonna fit over top of my square window or my rectangular window. And then I'm gonna go around it with some dimensional adhesive. And this stuff, um, they changed the size last year, the width on it, and I still cut it down really skinny because you don't need a big wide chunk of it for the most part and I get double use out of the whole roll of it since these rolls are not inexpensive. And I just slice the whole thing down the middle. That's why mine looks really skinny and it also looks uneven because I just whack at it with a pair of scissors. And then I just put a couple pieces all the way around it so that that panel sits up the same distance off the background paper. So I've got a couple different kinds of shaker contents that I can use for seeds. It's just going to hold them up to the window to see which one I like and the third one seemed to do the best in terms of looking like the kinds of seeds I wanted. Now there's not seeds, there's butterflies and all different kinds of flowers and things in here, but it's still going to work because it's going to have all the multicolors that I was picturing in my shaker. You could also do one with little beads in it that would look very realistic or you can use just wacky color ones. All different kinds of fun stuff would make a great shaker. And you could just stick this straight to the card base, but I thought I'd be safer turning it over if I actually just put the uh, little piece of paper over top of it before adhering it onto my card base. And then I'll stick it on. The full length of the panel is the full length of the card, and I've left a little bit of blue showing on the left and right. So that gives a little color to it, without a whole lot. And then I decided I wanted my sentiment. I was going to stamp it right on there and I thought, no, I want to make a little sign hanging off of the bird feeder. Then I'll draw a little extra attention to it as well as just making it fun, adding a little tiny bit more dimension to it. And I decided to do it at an angle so it looks like my little you are so tweet sign is hanging a little crooked. So that was a little fun treat to add on there. And I'm just leaving the pencil line on there, that little V shape to make it look like it's a string. It'll make it a little different than the string that's holding the shaker or the, the bird feeder up to the tree that it's hanging on. And it's really fun. Look at that cute little bird feeder. It's adorable. You could make a giant one on your card. You could make a little one, all different kinds of ways you can lay out a bird feeder on a, a card like this and stamp all kinds of beautiful birds on it. So there you go, there's my card for today. The whole new release is out and linked up below and more information is over on the blog. And if you're interested in seeing those other bird cards, I will have a link to those on the blog as well. I will see you guys later. Take care and have an awesome, awesome day. Bye-bye.